Have you ever seen a ref tackle a player? The back judge ran interference. A career too good to be true? Or the NFL turn off the lights at a Super Bowl? Half the power in New Orleans Stadium, the Superdome here, is out. Well, these are the NFL's most obviously scripted moments. Let's start with the infamous Saints pass interference no call. It was the 2019 championship game, and the refs had one job, to throw a flag on the most obvious pass interference of all time. But nope, they kept the flag in their pocket like it was the last slice of pizza at a party. Rams linebacker Nikel Roby Coleman hit Saints wide receiver Tommy Lee Lewis years before the ball arrived, and it was right in front of a referee. It was so obvious that fans went crazy calling the NFL scripted and cheaters. The Saints would have won the game and played against the Patriots in the Super Bowl if the flag was thrown, but as usual, the Saints got cheated in the playoffs. Speaking of cheating, have you ever seen a ref playing offense? Well, now you have. Because in a game between the Commanders and the Vikings, Taylor Heineke threw a deep ball into triple coverage, but the ref decided he was going to get in on the action too. He smacked a Vikings defender right out of the play, leaving him beat for a touchdown. That's embarrassing. Referees can make or break a game. Sometimes they're as blind as a bat, and other times they're more involved in the game than the actual players. And don't even get me started on the Super Bowl blackout. It was like the NFL was playing a game of, let's see how much we can mess with the Ravens. They were winning by a mile, but then the lights went out, and suddenly the 49ers were like, oh, we actually know how to play football too, and started making a comeback. The Ravens would ultimately hold the 49ers off and win the game. It was like a horror movie, except instead of a creepy clown, it was Roger Goodell trying to sabotage the game. And in the most recent Super Bowl, we saw everything from passing touchdowns to rushing and even a defensive touchdown. But unfortunately, we also saw the refs ruin what could have been the best Super Bowl ever. With less than two minutes left in the game, the refs threw a flag on a weak holding call that gave the Chiefs a first down and basically ended the game. If they hadn't thrown that pathetic flag, the Eagles could have had a chance to go downfield and make it an all-time Super Bowl. Hey, the refs had to make sure Patrick Mahomes won the Super Bowl. The NFL always wants their golden boy to win, just like they did with Tom Brady. And speaking of Tom Brady, the Patriots were down 20-14 in the fourth quarter of a championship game against the Jags. The refs threw some very questionable flags that helped the Patriots drive down the field and score. But it wasn't just the refs. Playoff Lenny was following the let Tom Brady get to another Super Bowl script because when Blake Bortles threw a pass to him, he didn't even try to catch it. He just stopped running and let it fall to the ground. And when linebacker Miles Jack stripped the ball from a Patriots player and started running down the field for a touchdown, the refs blew it dead. If you look at the replay, he was clearly never down. Come on, refs. Let the game play out. We want to see some action. Let me tell you, if the NFL is really scripted, then the writers are definitely big fans of the New England Patriots. They love them more than Tom Brady loves avocado ice cream. I love avocados. I mean, let's talk about the tuck rule. If you don't know what the tuck rule debacle is, let me explain. In a 2001 divisional playoff game between the New England Patriots and the Oakland Raiders, Tom Brady's crazy dynasty would begin. With less than two minutes left in a blizzard snow game, the Patriots were trying to get into field goal range. Tom Brady dropped back to pass when he suddenly got hit and fumbled the ball. The refs reviewed the play and said, because the ball was initially going forward and the tuck motion wasn't fully complete, that it was an incomplete pass, not a fumble. Tom Brady clearly fumbled the ball, but the refs were like, nah, let's call it an incomplete pass because why not? It was like they made up a new rule on the spot just to help the Patriots win. I wouldn't be surprised if they started inventing rules like, if Tom Brady winks at a ref, it counts as a touchdown. Okay, but more seriously, the most scripted moment of all time has to be when the Seahawks threw the ball in Super Bowl 49. I mean, you have Marshawn Lynch, also known as Beast Mode, and you decide to throw the ball instead of letting the man run it in? That's like having a Ferrari and deciding to ride a bike instead. It was so suspicious that I wouldn't be surprised if the Seahawks coach was secretly a Patriots fan. Oh, and let's not forget the biggest comeback in Super Bowl history when the Patriots were down 28-3 in Super Bowl 51. It was like watching a magician pull a rabbit out of his hat. Except, instead of a rabbit, it was a Lombardi trophy. As the last two quarters went by, the Patriots kept getting closer and closer to winning, until suddenly, the game was in overtime, and the Patriots started with the ball. Tom Brady must have made a deal with the devil or something, because that comeback was more unlikely than a unicorn winning the Kentucky Derby. And Julian Edelman's catch 
Man, that was so clutch that I'm pretty sure his hands are in the Patriots Hall of Fame. The entire game was right out of a Hollywood movie. Well, listen up. If there's one player who could have made it to Hollywood, it's Peyton freaking Manning. He's widely regarded as a top 5 QB all time, but it wasn't always rainbows and unicorns for him. You see, he didn't have enough rings to put him in the GOAT conversation. And to make matters worse, his younger brother Eli had more rings than him. But things started to change for Peyton when he moved to the Broncos. Yeah, his arm was getting weaker and he was getting older, but in his second year with the Broncos, he broke the record for most touchdowns in a season. But then, two short years later, it's like he got replaced by an old man. Because he led his team to the Super Bowl with only 9 touchdowns. Yep, you heard that right. He only threw 9 touchdowns in the season. You might be wondering, how the heck is that even possible? How can a team make it to the Super Bowl with a quarterback who throws 9 touchdowns? Well, that's where the scriptwriters come in. They knew Peyton had to win the Super Bowl so he could retire and walk off in the sunset. And boy did he deliver. The Broncos defense was on fire and they ended up beating the Panthers in the Super Bowl. Hey, wait up! I'm actually an NFL scriptwriter, and if you don't subscribe right now, I'll make sure your favorite team never wins the Super Bowl.